Aw oh, yeah, Rivers here with some cool tech. And today I'll be showing you how to build a video editing PC. I'll go through each piece of hardware, why I picked it, and how it's helpful for editing. And stay tuned because during the video I'll be giving away a couple Android mini PCs. Here's all the hardware that I used to build this computer. I bought it all from Amazon and Newegg, and I'll put links to everything that you see in the video in the description down below. So first off, let's start with the case. This is the Corsair Carbide 300R. This is a mid-tower case and it's got excellent ventilation, good room for storage, and a nice way to tuck the wires behind the motherboard. Plus, it's light and inexpensive. Now let's take a look at some of the most important components like the CPU, RAM, motherboard, hard drive, and video card. First up, I went with the Asus Sabertooth Z87 motherboard, and let me tell you, this thing is a beast. It's got tons of serial ATA3 ports, including 8 internal and 2 external. These ports are going to come in very handy because you're going to need a lot of hard drive space for video editing HD footage. You could also run 3 PCI Express video cards in here if you wanted to run in 8x mode or 2 in 16x mode. Plus, they really went all out to include all the accessories you could ever want. They included motherboard fans and even rubber plugs to cover slots and ports that aren't being used to make it look nice and clean. But the main reason I got this board, besides all the features, is that Asus boards are very stable. I've never had a problem with one yet, and video editing is very demanding on your computer. Plus, I might want to overclock a little, and this ensures me a stable machine. I'm going to be encoding a lot of Blu-rays and rendering a lot of video, so this needs to be one of the fastest CPUs out there. I chose the Intel i7-4770K Haswell. For the money at the time, this was the fastest thing you could get without spending a thousand bucks, especially if you consider the overclocking potential. I overclocked it up to 4.4 GHz using a small water cooler, the Corsair H50, and I think there's room to go further, but I can't take any chances of lockups during video editing, so I clocked it back down just a little to be safe. Next up, I loaded this motherboard to its max, which is 32GB of DDR3 DRAM. I used Crucial Ballistics 8GB modules, and these guys can go up to 1866MHz. And of course, you don't have to go that high on the frequency. If you clock it slower, some of the latencies like RAS and CAS can be better. It's just nice to have the flexibility to clock your memory how you want to. Plus, these are the same price as some slower memory, so why not? Anyways, Crucial makes some damn good stuff, and it comes with a lifetime warranty to boot. Next up is the hard drive, and this might be the most important part of a video editing computer. I got a couple of 1TB Samsung EVO 840 SSDs. I was going to go with a RAID striping array, but the drive is so fast I think it might just be overkill. Plus I've had problems in the past with RAID getting corrupted from power outages, so I'll probably just go with the individual drives. Here you can see in Adobe Premiere CS6 it scrubs nice and smooth, and that's really helpful to get your video editing done quickly. It looks like a professional video studio. And if you've used Adobe Premiere in the past, you know it can slow your computer down a lot, and this is actually running pretty well on here. I actually use Corel X6 a lot because it's nice and fast and it works great for what I need to do on YouTube. I'm actually editing this video right now in it and here you can see I've got four different video tracks going just playing through like normal and it's not skipping frames at all which is really good because when you start loading up a lot of tracks and a couple effects it really slows down the computer sometimes. Okay back to the Evo. Luckily I bought an install kit a while ago for my laptop upgrade and it came with this mounting plate. I just screwed in my drive and attached it to the quick release holder that comes with the Corsair case. Installation into the case could not get any easier. I also got a Western Digital Black 7200RPM 4TB drive for extra file storage. To install the drive, just slide it in and attach power and serial ATA to the back and you're done. For my video card, I went for a GeForce 660Ti from EVGA. This card has 1,344 CUDA cores, but more importantly it has a dual DVI output with an option for a third monitor using DisplayPort and even a fourth monitor using HDMI. I highly recommend an NVIDIA card because they are supported in a lot more video editing software packages. Anyways, as you can see here, it's a huge step up from my old GeForce 7600 GT. To run this card, you'll need some extra power, so it's got some connectors that go straight to your power supply. I'm using a Corsair 850 watt power supply which works well for Haswell CPUs and is good for future upgrades. Hardware acceleration can be used in a lot of programs like Adobe's After Effects and Premiere. Here I'm doing some 3D motion tracking in After Effects and the hardware acceleration comes in handy when you want to do ray tracing on your text. 
A good video card can help accelerate video editing in HD video and even in 4K video in some programs like Corel Video Studio X6. I'll put a link to some recommended video cards in the description down below. For my optical drive I went with the LG 14X Blu-ray Writer. I've always had really good results from LG Blu-ray drives. This drive works really well for backing up my Blu-ray collection. It's really fast and pretty quiet. Video narration is very important to me, so I got the Blue Spark USB microphone, but it wasn't working for me, I couldn't mount it, so I switched to the Blue Yeti, which is an awesome microphone. It's got excellent gain control, so you can be sure your voice can be heard very easily. In fact, I'm using it to record this right now, and it's almost at the lowest gain setting. And it's also very easy to mount to my Rode Microphone Boom using a $2 microphone adapter screw. There are also lots of shock mounts available for this if you feel like you need it. I highly recommend the boom itself too. It's fully spring loaded so you just it takes almost no effort to move the microphone around. It just has no weight when you go up and it's on a swivel and just clamps onto your desk. You also have an option to bolt it to the desk if you want. Highly recommend this boom though. Finally I added the eSports Theron gaming mouse which is a very precise laser mouse. Trust me, it's very nice to edit with this when you're cropping a quarter of a second off a video clip. Plus it's got several different colors to choose from, and of course my favorite color is this android green that it has. I hooked the computer up to two LG 23 inch IPS monitors using a dual monitor desk stand to save space. Having that extra room really helps too because I can run Android Mini PCs down below the monitors, I can hook up the Android Mini PCs to the HDMI input on the monitors, and I can capture video on the second monitor. I've been editing on this for about a month and it works awesome. It saves me a ton of time and makes editing much easier. I'll add more info about the software I use for editing in the video description below. I'll also add links to all the hardware you saw in the video as well. Okay, I said I'm going to be giving away a couple Android Mini PCs earlier in the video, so I'm going to be giving away the CX919 and the Flycast MK8093. Both amps will have the latest firmware or the best firmware that I can find pre-installed on there and ready to go. And this contest is super easy. All you need to do is be a subscriber of mine, hit that little like button, and leave a comment down below. The contest will end when I hit 20,000 YouTube subscribers. I'll pick two subscribers at random, I'll message you on YouTube, and I'll announce it on Facebook. Details about the rules will be in the video description down below. Good luck in the contest, and as always, aloha.